know uh, about. And OK, oops. Let me go back there. Career services. So that's usually the easiest way to find that. It's under student support services, but if you just go to the website and on the search, click on career services. Uh, we have a lot of good information for those who may be undecided about their, what they're interested in. External job postings are listed here. A lot of you might get job postings from me uh, anyway. I try and send those out to our you know, business, IT, and all of the uh, Associate Applied Science programs, but you can click on that and you'll find um, postings that employers have called in. These are not Indeed postings necessarily. Um, I, I don't look from Indeed and put them on this site at all. I send you Indeed postings that I come across, but this is, is mainly from local employers that have actually contacted me and I put those on the website and I update them anytime new, you know, something new comes in. I put those on there. What I wanted to focus on is the job search resources page. And there's quite a bit of information here. I know it, it looks like a, a lot, but there it really starts out as the foundational know yourself. Um, these are career assessments. Um, they focus on skills matching. Um, you're taking assessments that just help you decide and be aware of some of your skills because you know that's really what the interview is focused on, as well as your resume and your cover letter. You're really needing to um, start at the very beginning and what are my skills? What can I contribute to that employer, uh, to this job opening? And you know, how will I uh, best match the employer's needs and be much more likely to get hired? So ONET is a Department of Labor website um, as well as the Skill Matcher. Uh, those are you know just good strong sites that you take an assessment, you answer a few questions and that will help you maybe really zero in on some some skills that will help you again in your resume cover letter um, and in the interview because really working through your resume is a great way to prepare yourself for those interview questions um you know everything talks about a brand what is your brand so this is just a real quick quiz uh, to help you again just identify uh, what what your strengths are and again, help you match the requirements of the job that you're interested in. Uh, your marketing tool is your resume and a brand new resource that um, the Workforce Development for the state of Kentucky released um, last summer is called Kentucky Career Edge and it's for all Kentucky residents. And like I said, it's a free tool and we're gonna, we're gonna look at that a little bit more closely here in just a minute. Um, the next one is a, res a reference sheet sample. So if you've kind of wondered, you know, what that should look like, we're going to look at that here in just a minute. But that's that's a good way to make sure that you have all the information that that employer needs on your references. Networking techniques. I know uh, Michelle is going to be getting more into the um, information on networking, uh, LinkedIn is um, of course a, a great tool uh, to use for networking and job search and it's got resume tools and interviewing tools as well so if you haven't um, looked much at linkedin um, it is a very robust networking tool and it's a great way to you know to reach out and find people too that that are doing what you want to do and then here's a lot on interview preparation I think this can be helpful for phone interviews and um, our virtual interviews too. It's called phone virtual interview cheat sheet. Let me look at that one in just a minute. It's off of a great um, career website, themuse.com, and you can um, edit this and download it and then you know plug your information in and print it out and have it there right beside you when we kind of get the jitters and we get stuck on what we want to say. Uh, we completely go blank maybe. Uh, this may be very helpful and you can do it, you know, for each position, different position that you apply for. Um, you know, what are you going to do when they ask you to, you know, tell a little bit about yourself? And that question can be asked in different ways, but if you've kind of thought through and organized your thoughts on, um, you know, your what you're doing presently, what you've done in the past, and what you hope to do 
in the future with your skills and for that employer that can be really helpful. Um, key accomplishments, key stories. Um, employers like to to uh, have a little bit of detail, a little bit of um, you know how you've handled situations in the past, maybe when you made a mistake and how you overcame that, how you learned from it. So these are just good ways to help you um, through that part of the interview. Thinking about the, the job itself, um, you know, doing some research and what is about that employer or that specific job that um, makes you want to apply for it and want to work there. So again, just good things to think about and a handy tool. And then these are uh, questions that you could ask the employer. I wouldn't ask five of them, but I mean, you could have a few listed there. Um, you know, you don't want to you don't want to ask a question that the employers already answered in the interview, so it's good to have a few extra there um, just to help you through. You certainly want a question to, to ask. Um, I think that's one one issue in the interview is that you get to the end and you're just excited to, to get out of there and for it to be over that when they ask you if you have any questions, you just say no and and you really don't want to do that. You really want to show your enthusiasm and that you are really seriously interested in the position. So you definitely want to have um, have some questions. OK, and again, more tools are listed here. Uh, creating your one minute commercial and your one minute commercial is really answering that question. Tell me a little bit about yourself because a lot of times we get very, very nervous in that in the first few minutes of the interview. So having something kind of thought through and prepared, uh, focused on your education, your training, um, the skills you can contribute, um, that will help you uh, stay organized and stay calm and you know be ready for the questions that follow. Uh, more information is uh, provided here at the bottom. I want to show you real quick since we're going to be talking some about resumes. Um, there's quite a bit of information and samples on resumes listed here and I know it's a ton of information, but uh, listed here is that Kentucky Career Edge tool that I was talking about and um, we're going to go to that now. Uh, you don't have to go to the website, you know, to be able to find that. It's real easy, kycareeredge.com. And it's a very fast login. It's basically, uh, you know, your name and email address and your zip code. So that takes us in. And you see just a lot of information, different modules on a variety of things from life skills to uh, to job search skills, professional development. Let's look at that one real quick. I mean, there's going to be something that um, you could probably use some extra information on, some some extra um, training on, reading on, journaling on, just lots of lots of uh, life skills and and good things to think about. Whether it's retirement, you know, how to budget, how to manage your time, just lots of lots of information on that. Uh, what I wanted to focus on is the toolkit in the uh, far right here. The toolkit covers an interview simulation trainer, a cover letter, um, e-portfolio, which we'll touch on just really briefly, and the resume builder and a thank you letter. So the cover letter, resume builder and the thank you letter are all um, good ways to, to get started if you if you really haven't worked on a resume much um, you have one but you're not happy with it uh, this is this is a good way to uh, to get that started and to get you thinking what you can include that maybe you hadn't thought about before so we're going to look at those tools um, just real briefly the interview simulation trainer I would highly recommend that you give this a try um, and I believe I forgot to turn on the the audio uh, portion for this to be able to have sound, but it's it's a really good uh, way to practice. You'll be asked. Uh, you can just do start new interview and put the name of your interview. And let me just uh, pull one up here. And you'll be asked uh, the top 15 typical interview questions. 
and um, you simply click on it and then your your interviewer. Oh, you can hear. OK. OK, so you can record, you can. Um, you can delete it if you want and you can you know listen to uh, how you answered the question, how you responded to it, and you can get a coach. You know, if you get stuck on one of these questions and you say, you know, I don't know, what is my greatest weakness? I don't know how to answer that. I've always struggled with that. You can get some coaching here, and then this gentleman will give you a little bit of information on how to, how to best respond to that. So, so don't forget about this tool. It is really helpful. And as we're doing more and more online, um, online interviews, I think you'll find that to be really, really very helpful. So that's an interview simulation trainer. That'd be great to do before we have our uh, you know, practice interview. And the uh, cover letter. Here's again, you can get coaching on that as well. Um, and you can just click create. Create a new cover letter and I've gone through some of the steps, but what it does is just break down you know, like the 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 different parts to a cover letter to a you know a formal business letter that sometimes we just forget because we don't send them very often. Um, it just breaks down each section for it, and it'll give you some ideas for the body of it. But you certainly want to do your research on the company itself and be able to really have a strong uh, section there where you're really trying to uh, connect the skills that you have with the requirements of the job and you do want to tailor you know tailor to each job uh, same way with with your resume you want to tailor that summary to fit the job so and that's just kind of the body but it, it does it gives you some some places to start and um, and then i've got another website that would give you uh, give you some good samples too whether it be it or business um, That'll be most helpful. This is the resume builder and again coaches you along on that as well and it breaks it down into some. So I mean if you've not had a resume before or even if you have and you just kind of want a clean start and just give this tool a try. It just breaks down each of your uh, each of the sections. Um, it's got your heading and then it's got a summary section and that's got suggestions. I know you certainly wouldn't want to like use all of this, but there may be some things that helps trigger, uh, you know, your memory. You say, well, yeah, I do. I do have this or that skill that's listed there. So the summary is just a, a nice way for the employer to see right at the top of the page um, what you what you have, um, the skills that you have to contribute. So that's what this person talks about their medical terminology, uh, administrative, their clinical tasks that they've learned in class, um, which will be very helpful for them as they continue on. You can continue to add bullets if you want, or um, as as few as you want to add. It breaks it down to the education section. Um, you can move things around also. You know, if you'd rather have experience, if you've got really relevant experience, work experience right now, then um, you know you would want to put that near the top. You know, under the summary, after maybe your education gets a little dated, then you'd want to switch those around. But um, you can put you know as many uh, places that you've taken classes or earned degrees or certificates. You can include those. But your resume is your marketing tool. So I mean, if you've earned uh, degrees from years ago and it's not really related and you don't want to list it, you certainly don't have to. It's like I say, it's your marketing tool, so you're going to focus on what that employer needs. So there's a section for um, education and for your ex your work experience. And same thing with work experience. You don't have to put every single thing um, on there. Again, if it's if it's not that related then you can certainly leave those off. And then if there is some some volunteer work that you think would be meaningful for that employer to know, um, you can can certainly list that in uh, any uh, you know certifications that you've earned. 
So that is a little bit about the resume builder. I know that was quick, but it is a real step by step kind of process the same with the cover letter and then the thank you letter. You know, thank you letter is pretty short. Um, it's really to the point after you've had the interview. Um, it is uh, really important. Most people forget about it or don't, don't think about it or don't think it's important, but a thank you letter is really important to have. I've talked to many recruiters that have said, you know, I, I interviewed a couple people. They were equally qualified. One sent me a thank you letter and the other one didn't. And it was just enough to tip the scales. So it is important to do. It's it's a it's a great courtesy to that employer's time. And you just never know, even if you don't get the job, you send that thank you letter. Um, they remember that. And sometimes things happen to uh, to new employees and they have to start, uh, you know, start looking again for somebody to fit that job. So that could, you know, really, really pay off in future opportunities. OK, the next area I want to point out real quick is personality assessment. And you may think, well, what's you know, what's that got to do with the job search? But, you know, a job has to be a good fit for you and your personality and what your preferences are. So this is um, this is a good way just to go down through and take the assessment. It doesn't take very long at all. It's very short. And some of you have probably taken a Myers-Briggs personality test. Um, I am an ISFJ, a definite introvert for sure. Um, but it does have you kind of just answer some questions. And yeah, they take just a few minutes to think about. But this might be something that helps you kind of put into words your strengths and how that might affect uh, what you would accept in a job or what you would not. Um, you know, work related strengths. It pulls those out for your personality type and this may help you in thinking about, um, you know, what's going to be a good fit for you or a person, a, a strength that you might need to include on your resume or in your, uh, in, in one of your stories for your, for your interview. Um, just to really highlight your strengths. Um, so I think I think this can be can be really helpful how to conduct a successful job search uh, for your strengths as well as your weaknesses. So as far as my personality type, there are some things that uh, I can definitely see as a weakness in myself and uh, how, how I can try to overcome it. So it kind of just forces you to think through that and um, and list some things that might be really insightful for you as you start thinking about uh, the job interview. So I would encourage you to take that personality time. Again, it doesn't take long and you may have taken several even years ago, but um, taking that and really thinking about your job search uh, and uh, you know the, the culture of, of the, uh, the workplace that you're thinking about uh, and how you'd be a good fit and highlighting your strengths and weaknesses. And then the last section on here is the e-portfolio and uh, that will more information will be shared about this, but it's just a, a nice way to kind of house everything that you're working on in uh, Kentucky Career Edge. You're just including your information um, and what you want to of it. Uh, if you want to include your, your Facebook or your Twitter, your LinkedIn, you can certainly do that. Um, you can indicate Henderson Community College. So if you don't mind, if you're, you know, using this, uh, if you would just do the drop down box and put that in there and list me as your case manager. And that way I can, you know, we can just kind of get an idea of how many students are, are using the tool. And uh, some things don't apply. I, mean, I don't know exactly what all of those things are because we're using this throughout the state. So some are very specific on different programs that they have. You can include, you know, in the box, just to help you remember, maybe after you've done your personality assessment, you know, what is what is very unique and compelling about you? Because that might be an interview question. Um, and, and so it's good to really have thought through that and what, you know, think about what you could add. Uh, skills, awards, you know, awards, things that we just maybe forget about. So this will hopefully be a good time of, of reflection for you. Um, you can upload your, your resume transcripts, your letter of recommendations, 
um, your cover letter, your reference page, your thank you letter. So you can include all of those things. And again, it's just handy to have. Um, if you create a resume or a cover letter or thank you letter in Kentucky Career Edge, that doesn't mean it's that you can't get access to it unless you go back to Kentucky Career Edge. You can save all of those. It'll download it in a Microsoft Word and then you can um, you can you know save that yourself. So you after you create something within Edge, you never have to go back to Edge to access it. You you will have that uh, yourself. And it'll you know like for the resume, it'll have different themes, so different ways of formatting, different ways it can look. You know you can try different styles. Um, you know you can talk to 20 different people about the way a resume should look and you'll get 20 different opinions on it. So my, you know, my suggestion is to just pick something that is easy to read and organized and really focuses on your skills to target that employer's opening, you know, at the top in your summary. Because I, what they read at the top will really determine if they read any further. Because uh, uh, as I'm sure you've heard, you know, it's literally seconds that an employer is looking at a resume. And um, so if you don't kind of get their attention at the very top with that summary as to how you're going to meet their need, then they uh, literally may not may not read any further. So anytime you use the portfolio, if you'll just remember to scroll all the way down and hit save and continue or else you will have put information in and it won't save any of it. So it's kind of a long page and kind of hard to remember, but if you will, just scroll all the way down and you'll have that. And so, uh, and again, it just keeps track of your information. So good tool. And that is the ePortfolio and the Kentucky Career Center.